We use these three distributions when we're considering hypothesis testings about the mu of a, popu of a population and when we look at confidence intervals for that, uh, <clears throat> for that mean of a population. Here are the three kinds of problems that can occur when we're doing hypothesis testing. In this particular video, we're going to look at the two-tailed hypothesis test. Here's the idea. Someone is claiming that, they're, that, that uh, the mean of the population is going to be some number we'll call mu naught. In the alternative, someone else is claiming, no, that's not true. Those just aren't equal. Either the mean is bigger than that or else it's less than the mu naught. The real mean is actually bigger than what was claimed by the null hypothesis or else it's less than one of the two. So this is a two-tailed test is what it's called. So let's examine that in a little bit more detail. Here's the situation. Someone is claiming that in this population the, and this is called the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis always has an equal sign in it. They're claiming that the mean of this population is equal to some particular number. For our discussion, we're going to call that number mu naught. Okay? So they're claiming that this mean of this population is mu naught. So, <clears throat> and the alternative is, a two-tailed test, the alternative hypothesis is saying, well, no, that isn't true. The mean is anything but that. It's either less than or it's greater than. I don't know which one, but it's one of those two. Okay, it's not equal to. That's uh, when we have a two-tailed test. So what we're going to do is take a sample. We can't look at the entire population, so we take a sample of, of n different items and we find <clears throat> a mean associated with that. I don't know where that that sample mean ends up, but it ends up here somewhere. Okay, so there's the sample mean. And the question is, if this really is the mean, if mu naught really is the mean, how likely is it that x bar would end up this far away from that particular number, that mu naught? So we're going to investigate that in the following way. We're going to take that x bar and turn it to a t value to count the number of, of, uh, of standard deviations we are away, the number of standard errors that, that we are away from this uh, mean that the null hypothesis is, is claiming. That calculation is done as follows. We take x bar minus the hypothesized mean and divide that by the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. That's called the standard error. S divided by the square root of n. Okay. It's supposed to be an S right here. All right, so what that's calculating is how many standard deviations we are away from the mean. So that going to be some particular t value. And so this x bar has a t representation down here in the in the t distribution. Now, because we're looking at a two-tailed test, we also that could have possibly just as likely been a negative t. Okay? Now, that's how this varies from a, from the one-tailed tests. In this case, we're looking at symmetry here, uh, the t and the, and the t minus. So we could find a p-value, which is going to be the area above here, plus the area below here. Okay. Now that's really going to be just two times this area that's up above this, this t. So that's going to be a p-value. If the p-value is small, if the p-value is low, the null hypothesis must go. What that's meaning is, if this t that we got from, we 
took our sample, we found the X bar, we found the T that went with it. If that comes out here a long ways away from this, so that the area above here and this area below in the two tails is small, then that's very, very unlikely that that could occur. And so we'll reject the null hypothesis. In the more formal setting, somebody would have set some significance level. Maybe the significance level is 0 0.01. Okay. Then they'd take that significance level and cut it in half and put point, half of it up here. They'd find this T value so that half of it would be up here and find this minus T value so that the other half of it would be down there. If the significance for example, if the significance level is 0 0.05, then this green area up here would have to be 0 0.00. If the significance level was 0 0.01, then this green area above would have to be 0 0.005, and this green area below would have to be 0 0.005. Okay? And then if this T value that we got ends up in any of this green area, that tail above or that tail below, then we would reject the null hypothesis. If, however, that T value ends up closer to, uh, to zero, okay, here in, in the middle, then it's not quite as unlikely that that would occur, and so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so there's always two ways of doing this. The classical way where somebody specifies a significance level and you, and you color in that green area and see where the T goes, or the more modern way where people just plain look at the, the p-value, and if the p-value is low enough, the, then the null hypothesis must go. If the p-value is low, the null hypothesis must go. We're rejecting the null hypothesis. If the t-value ends up in that green area, then uh, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay.